The story begins with a princess dining with her nanny. The nanny adores the princess, and the princess cherishes her nanny as if she were an actual family member. When the princess was alone, she often reflected on her terrible life. She is dressed poorly, and despite her age, she appears to be a five-year-old due to her small stature. Our princess, the protagonist, was reincarnated into the novel she was reading in her previous life. The story of the novel focused on Duke Bardian, who had never experienced love, and Reyna, a powerful saintess of an unknown clan with enormous divine power and a warm heart. They met by chance, ignored their differences, and eventually married. They had a happy marriage before their child was born. However, the story's conclusion was tragic. Reyna's body did not survive giving birth to the princess and died. The duke suffered greatly as a result, and he had already forgotten about their newborn kid. Back in the present, the princess is taking a walk in the garden when she overhears the maids conversing. She hides in the bushes to look for another way when she overhears her name being belittled. She flees as quickly as she can since she doesn't want to hear anymore. It was painful to hear and difficult to understand that she had been abandoned by her family both now and in her past life. The princess wakes up one morning to loud noises outside of her bedroom. When she stepped outdoors, maids rushed from here and there, saying that the duke, her father, was about to return from the war after how many years. One maid noticed the princess and shoved her away, seeing her as an abandoned princess rather than a true princess. The princess ignored the maid's requests to return to her room, instead, she hides in the bushes near the entrance for a reason to see her father for the first time. When the duke arrived, she greeted him nicely, but the duke inquired where the princess's nanny was and why she was in front of him. The princess wondered if she was truly an abandoned princess, so she made a scene by calling the duke an idiot, throwing her shoes in his face, and fleeing in tears. When the princess was strolling and thinking about what she did back there, she noticed the duke following her. She assumed he was going to punish her, so she pretended to be unafraid in front of him. But the duke was only concerned about her bleeding foot without shoes. After handing her the shoes she threw, the duke left. The princess was perplexed, but one thing was apparent to her, she still has a chance since the duke cares and loves her, and she will not give up easily. The princess is determined the next day to melt his father's heart. Her first intention is to send flowers to the duke every day. The duke proposed to his late wife in a garden full of pale purple flowers, thus those flowers are important to her initial plan. Two maids interrupted her while she was collecting flowers in the garden. They address her as if they are looking down on her as if she were an abandoned princess. Their true purpose for appearing is to bully her by splashing water on her. The princess thinks it is too much and fights back. When the other maids can't take it any longer, she's about to hit her when the duke appears, grimacing and demanding what's going on. The duke ordered the maids to explain the issue, if they did not, they would be killed. The maids pretended to be checking the garden when the princess abruptly tugged one of the maids' hair. The princess was shocked and yelled that she had been wrongly accused. When the duke inquired about what she was doing in the garden, the princess described what happened. The princess explained that she had been collecting flowers when the servants unexpectedly splashed water on her. The maid retorts to her that she should speak the truth, but the princess holds firm in her remarks, so the maids quickly grasp her, but the duke intervenes to prevent the maid from harming the princess. The duke's power, known as Auror, is so great that neither magic nor sword can compare, and he is the only one who can freely utilize it. The duke charged the maids with desecrating aristocracy and ordered his knight to take them away. When the princess and the duke were left alone together, the princess expected him to leave her without even asking whether she was okay, but instead, the duke picked up a flower for her because that was the reason she was there in the first place. The princess assumed he was concerned about her. When the duke was ready to depart, the princess called on him and asked if he liked the flower, to which the duke simply said yes and told her to go inside and take a shower. His response surprised the princess. 
The princess felt happy after the event since she thought the dupe despised her, but that was not the case, so she continued her plan to send her father flowers. She's ready to deliver the flower to the duke when she realizes she has no idea where her father is, so she follows one of the maids and goes to hide in the corner of her father's office. The duke noticed her right away and took a closer look. The princess met him and presented him with a flower as a gift. The duke can't figure out what's going on when the princess tells him that if they stay close, she'll offer him flowers every day. When the princess left, the duke was taken aback. The princess seeks the duke once a week to deliver flowers after bringing him the first flower, but the duke realizes she has small cuts on her hand from picking it, so he tells her not to bring any more from that day forward. The princess did not return to her father's office after that day, but she is determined not to give up, so she and her nanny went to watch the duke on his training with the other knights one day. When she saw her father, she yelled, Dad! The duke was taken aback when he heard the loud noise. The princess rushes up to him with a bright smile on her face. The other knights are murmuring among themselves about who the little girl is. The princess accused her father of being terrible because he did not even greet the tiny princess. When the duke heard that, he was taken aback. The duke says it is dangerous for her to remain on the training grounds, so he has instructed his trusted knight to take over the training. The cakes are offered to the princess at the duke's office because she considers them tasty. The princess asked the duke her name while they were having tea and pastries. The duke was so taken aback that he dropped his cup of tea. The princess told him that everyone calls her princess, that her nanny has a name, and that even flowers have names. The duke instantly responded that her name is Emily at Bardion, which means shine with love. The princess asked her father if he was the one who named her, and the duke replied that it was his beloved wife who did. The duke blamed himself for not telling everyone her name because a lot of things happened in his life after his wife died, thus it was his fault, he informed the princess. The princess told him that she adored her name and thanked him for informing her of it. They both had a smile on their faces after that. The princess was happily humming her name in the corridor when a maid called her. The maid informs her that all of the servants in the garden incidents are executed in the dungeon. The princess wondered why she was telling her that. The maid burst into rage, blaming the princess for what had happened to the servants. Then she labeled the princess selfish and said she doesn't pity them while grabbing her to the dungeon when Alvin, the duke's loyal knight, passed by and questions the maid what she was doing to the princess. The princess remembered Elvin from the novel. He was a devoted knight who endured all the hardships with the duke. He was also the one who was always on the duke's side when he was threatened by the nobles. Those nobles hated Elvin because he was known as the duke's dog. Elvin and the princess exchanged greetings. Elvin was not passing by but instead, came to visit her and accompany her to the duke's office. The princess greeted her father in the office with a wide smile and a bouquet of flowers in hand as a present for the duke. The duke told her not to bring flowers anymore, but the princess argued that they were beautiful and that she had even learned to build a bouquet just for him. The princess questioned the duke if he was occupied while he was working. When the duke replied that he was not, the princess invited her father to a meal. All the servants gathered in the dining room to meet them as they made their way to dinner. The princess was pleasantly delighted by the cuisine, which was all exquisite, but this was not the reason she invited the duke to dinner. She was looking for the maid who tried to take her to the dungeons since that had been her intention all along, to let the duke know how the servants treated her without directly notifying the duke. She found the maid from earlier while glancing around at the servants' faces, so she began with her. She pointed out that she was the servant who tried to drag her into the dungeons, as well as the male staff who only gave her ruined cakes and the other who never gave her firewood to heat the room in the cold. Finally, she mentioned that this is the first time she has seen that delicious food on the table. The duke is enraged by what he hears and summons the butler. When the butler arrived, the princess pointed out the butler, who claimed that the princess was useless. That enraged the duke, 
who used his powers on the butler and forced him to explain. But the butler insisted that nothing happened, so the duke turned to his child instead. He asked the tiny princess if the mansion celebrated her birthday and if they produced new dresses for her, and she said, and oh. That gave the duke an obvious conclusion that didn't require any further explanation. He punished all of the servants and the butler whom the princess pointed out. The duke orders the princess's nanny to be summoned, and the princess clutches her father, declaring that her nanny is her only family and the only person who loves her. The duke simply wants to hear everything the nanny has to say about how they managed to get by while the duke is away. As the nanny entered the room, the princess hugged her nanny because she was crying or frightened for her nanny, but the duke wanted the nanny to tell him all that had happened. Before leaving for battle, the duke always sends his faithful knight numerous times to report on the princess's life. The nanny and the princess are still doing well in those days. When the duke left for the north, the servants assumed that the princess had been abandoned by his father, so they stole all of the money for the princess's living needs and also prevented the nanny's contact outside the mansion, making their lives miserable. The duke instructed the nanny to return the princess to her room while he handled the situation. The princess has no appetite in her room since she is thinking about her father and how lonely the room is. The nanny asked the princess if she wanted to go for a walk in the garden that night. The princess is unaware that the duke is also present. The princess suddenly walked towards her father when the duke started talking. He told her he was terrified of getting too close to her because she, like her mother, would vanish. He went on to say that if he gets too near to her, the princess will be cursed. The princess inquired as to whether the duke would be unable to meet her because of this. She also stated that talking to him and giving him gifts made her happy. She adds that she loves the duke so much that she is always smiling, and she hopes the same for the duke while he is with her. Hearing such comments made the duke heartbroken. The duke apologized to her and the princess assured him that everything was fine now. Did you like the manlaw? Please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more.